last one on the significant documents, and we're going to wrap it up today. Set a timer for 15 minutes. Setting the timer. Okay. Your right. timer is set for 15 minutes. Fundamental political principles, the basic government ideas. Where or what were the documents where those ideas were written? And then we take all those ideas, the best ones, and we put them in the U.S. Constitution. We've done the Constitution. You got a pretty good idea. We're going to go over it again and again and again because it's the biggest document maybe in world history. It's very influential, and we have to follow it every single day. Done the ideas. You should know these. Ad, I mean, we've gone over them ad nauseum. Consent of the governed. Limited government. Democracy. Rule of law. Representative government. The last document. And all of these documents have contained one or two, three or four of those principles. The last document will be the Articles of Confederation. It has some of those ideas. Now, what's going to make the Articles of Confederation kind of unique is that it's going to get thrown away. It's going to get torn up. And for the most part, we remember the Articles of Confederation because it's a failure. It's strange, but it's not really. Because if you think about your life... Sure, the good times have definitely influenced you. The good choices that you have made have worked out well. But a lot of times, the bad choices, your mistakes have made you much, much better, much stronger. We often learn from our mistakes more than we do the good choices. And the Articles of Confederation will symbolize that concept. Come on, man. I spent a lot of time on these PowerPoints. I... I swear, that's the last time that I'm going to do it. Last time. So we have the American Revolution, and America wins! Yay! Go America! It's actually a major upset. We should not have won that war, but we did. Whatever. And we established a government. Now, the government that you see on the screen with three branches and presidents and judicial branch, that is not the government that we created the first time around. When we create our first government, we're heavily influenced by what had just happened. We're heavily influenced by the government that just ruled us, and we did not like the government that just ruled us. We saw what the king did, and we said, whoa, 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 whoa. you have too much power. You abuse your citizens. When we win this war and when we start our own country, we're going to do things a little different. And typically what people do... We take that like Albert Einstein type of thing. If you do, if you fail, try to do the opposite. Don't do the same thing over and over and over and over. That's the definition of insanity. Trying to do the same thing over and expecting different results, that is the definition of insanity. So we look at what the king does and we look at the king's government and say, well, when we start our government, we don't want to do that. That would be insanity. So let's do the opposite. It's a good scientific approach. There's some problems here. So we set up a government and we do the opposite. And that government is defined or called the Articles of Confederation. That's the document that describes our original government in 1777. So this actually exists while we're fighting the war. So we're not completely free yet. But since we've declared our independence, we need to have a government while we're fighting the war. And that's the Articles, an article, right? When you think of an article, it's in a magazine or a newspaper. So it's basically just a document of confederation. Confederation means a group. So the document that explains our group, the group of colonies. And in it, we list several things. And several things happen. So the first thing you need to know about the Articles of Confederation, you can see what our government looks like. It is the first form of national government. It will later be replaced by the U.S. Constitution, our current form of government. The second thing, in this document... The Articles of Confederation, which really just only establishes a legislative branch. In that document, we don't have an executive branch. We don't have a judicial branch. It doesn't set up two branches of the legislative branch. It's just really a legislative branch that makes laws. In that first form of national government, its main idea is to give all the power to the individual states and a weak central government. So a weak government that rules over all the colonies. A weak government that rules over all the different states. Most of the power of government will 
lie in the individual states. The individual states will do their own thing and there will not be a central, there will not be a federal government that really can boss around the individual states. Basically, they can do whatever they want. It's kind of back to what it was. You're like, why, why would they do that? We're going to talk about why they did that here in a second. But first of all, let's just talk about the ideas in the document. So the first thing is you can't tax the people. That's a problem. We can talk about that in a second. But again, these colonists were upset at the king and all the power that he had. So we're doing the opposite. And if the king had too much power and the king was taxing us too much and abusing us too much, well, let's just not do those things. Let's give the government little power and let's not let the government tax us. So that's a problem. That's a big problem. If the government doesn't have money, it can't do anything. It can't do anything. Money is what enables the government to build roads, to build schools, to hire police, to hire an army. If the government can't tax you, it doesn't have any money. So you definitely have lim limited the government's power. And that's what we wanted. We wanted the opposite of the king. We wanted a very limited government. But too limited is too limited. And if you don't have money, then you can't enforce laws. And now we're back to a major problem of if you can't enforce laws, then there, are there even laws? Are we going to have chaos and anarchy? We did not have a president. We did not have an executive branch. We also did not have a common currency. There wasn't a money. There wasn't a dollar that could be spent in all the different states. All the different states had different currencies and you had to exchange your money. That's a problem. That makes it hard to do business. We have really limited the power of the government to a point that we don't even really have a government. And if you don't have a government, it can't protect rights and really can't allow the country to grow. Another problem or weakness with the Articles of Confederation. When you wanted to pass a law, every state got one vote. What's the problem? Look, every state should get one vote. That makes sense. Well, think about it a little bit closer. Go a little bit more in depth. What could be a problem with giving every state just one vote? Little old Rhode Island gets one vote in determining new laws. Virginia, which has many, many, many more people living in it, gets one vote. Is that fair? There's a couple people living in Rhode Island and they get one whole vote to determine a law that will affect the country. Virginia has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. They still only get one vote. Should the states have equal power? They said yes, the specific states should have equal power. But that's really not fair to all the people living in Virginia, that all these people have less power than this person. I get it on a state level, one state, one state. But you have to think about that state has a lot of people. And they should have more say than a couple people. If there's a million people living in Virginia and there's 10 people living in Rhode Island, why should 10 people have the same power as a million? That doesn't make sense. Now, I've exaggerated those numbers, but to give you a point, that that's a problem. Probably should have thought more about that. Next problem. If you wanted to pass a law, you not only needed a majority, you needed nine states or two-thirds to say yes. That's very difficult to achieve, very hard to pass new laws when you've got to get not only the majority, you've got to get nine out of the 13 states to say yes. It's very difficult because nine out of the third state, that's because they're all so different. You have to get all these states to agree on something. Very difficult to do. Why did they make the government so weak? Well, the reason was they're afraid if you create a president, if you create an executive branch, you're going to create a king. And that's what we just left. We just had a king that took away our right to trial. We just had a king who fought a war against us because we were mad at him. We had a king who took away our representative government. We had a king that unfairly taxed us over and over and over. We did not want one individual or one authority that could abuse us. So we're not going to create that scenario. We're not going to create a situation where a person in the government can get a bunch of power. So we do not create a president in the Articles of Confederation. If we compare the arts, so that's basically it. The Arcus Confederation was really weak. And as I mentioned, it's the first form of government. We have to create a second form of government. The reason why we have to create a constitution is because the Articles of Confederation failed because it was too weak. It makes sense why they did what they did. 
They limited the government, but they went too far. And so the second time around, when they create a new government under the U.S. Constitution, they'll learn from the principles. They'll learn from the various documents. and They'll say, yes, we need to limit government, but we don't want it too limited. We've got to do other things. We need the government to be able to function. We need the government to be able to do something, because if it can't, then it can't do its basic job, which is to protect our right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So if we look at the Venn diagram in front of you and we compare and contrast the Articles of Confederation and the U.S. Constitution, they are both constitutions that explain governments. They both united the separate states. Now, you would argue that the Constitution did a better job of bringing the states together than the Articles of Confederation. They both had legislatures or legislative branches or a branch of the government that makes laws. Legislate means to make laws. So they both could make laws and they both passed laws. Where were they different? Articles of Confederation did not allow the federal government to tax. Individual states could tax, but the federal government could not tax. And the federal government is what raises your army. Otherwise, you get individual state armies, individual militias. It's much better to have one national army united and trained in the same way that can move from state to state. No taxes. The U.S. Constitution, fair or unfair, allows the government to create taxes. There was a judicial branch in the Constitution, Article 3. No judicial branch in the Articles of Confederation. No executive branch in the Articles of Confederation, right? They're worried about a king. We have a president today. We have an executive branch with many functions, many powers. We have briefly talked about what exactly the executive branch can do. We will spend several days in the next unit talking about the powers, the rules, and the responsibilities of our president and the executive branch. The biggest difference in our Venn diagram is that the Articles of Confederation, our first government, created a weak central or a weak federal government. We now have a strong federal government that rules over the states. The states still have some power, but not like they did in Articles of Confederation. The Articles of Confederation, most of the power relied in the individual states. Here, the power is in the federal government, rules over all of them. They can say, oh, that sounds a lot like you're getting in that king range. And it's true, but we did put some stipulations in the U.S. Constitution called checks and balances that limit the power of the government. So reviewing as we wrap up here. Our first document of our significant documents, which detail fundamental political principles, were the rule of law. We all are equal under the law. We all agree to the rule that we must follow the law. We have the right to trial. That's Well, when I say we, I'm talking about England. And then rich people got rights, but that's a stepping stone to more rights. The English Bill of Rights in 1689, separation of powers. We separate the government into separate branches. We have three branches today, legislative, executive, and judicial. The first time this comes into play was when you had a king and you had a parliamentary government. So really just a legislative branch and a king. But again, this is 1689. These are all stepping stones. We'll take these ideas, make them better, put them in our constitution. Uh, we limit the power of the government. We, They did. I keep saying we because we do this as well. Elections, you vote to make decisions, freedom of speech, no torturing, and right to bear arms. The Charter of Virginia Company of London, rights of Englishmen, again, the idea of rights and individual rights, which ties into democracy, which is one of our fundamental political principles. And then representative government, which is a fundamental political principle. We will elect a representative to make rules for us because we can't vote for every single issue. Fundamental political principles lead to the documents lead to the U.S. Constitution. We've done the principles. We're going to do them again. Well, I got a couple minutes. We got a minute and 30. The documents, Constitution. We should know all this by now. Your documents. Oh, you got a graphic organizer for the documents as well? Yes, of course. I've got a fun, I've got a graphic organizer for the documents. 1215 Magna Carta. That's what it does. 1689, the English Bill of Rights. Those are the principles in it. Charter Virginia Company of London, BAM, Declaration of Independence, which we talked about today, the grievances, which were the complaints. We declare our independence. We state that all men are created equal, which is a heavy concept today, which is part of the American way. It's in our U.S. Constitution. 14th Amendment of our U.S. Constitution will reiterate that point. And then last, we believe that the government shall protect our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, which was also called property by John Locke, written by Thomas Jefferson. T. 
TGF wrote that Declaration of Independence 1776, 1777. You get to Articles of Confederation. It's a bit of a failure, more of a lesson than what not to do. It did set up a national government, but it was too weak. Gave too much power to the states. No president, no taxes, no common currency, could not enforce, enforce laws. Yeah, a bit of a failure. There it is. Five documents. Understand the ideas in those documents. And then connect the documents and the ideas to the U.S. Constitution. It took us a while, folks. There was three of these videos, but we made it. Through. Was it three or four? I don't know. I think there were four. Was that four? There's three, I think. Thanks for being with me. And they say torture is illegal. <laughs>